Hey there, welcome to Anderton's TV. My name is Ben. It's my pleasure to introduce Hucky here from Blue Microphones. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Pleasure, pleasure to have you over here. Blue Microphones, company I've always been aware of, kind of at the fringe, but new to us at Anderton, so I'm really excited to actually delve into Great. the range. If you're a YouTube kind of person, you might recognize something like this from, I think, Good Mythical Morning. That's kind of front and center on there. Um, some really fun kind of shapes back here. Um, we've got three... Three ones that we want to really, really uh, take a, a close look at today. Where do we start? Well, uh, they're a range, as, as uh, you and I discussed before the video. And uh, it, it, traditionally, we had looked at these as kind of a, a good, better, best because of price point. Now, all of these are under 500 pounds. But they really tonally have very different uh, appeals to people, which lend themselves to, to different voices, different instruments, things like that. So um, overall... Uh, I mean, we can start with the the, the spark. Absolutely. The so the spark is uh, is a very neutral sounding mic. Um, it accentuates the mid range of the voice characteristic. Uh, it's great on things like acoustic instruments, things that you really want the body uh, or string, like on a, on an acoustic guitar, for example. You want to hear that string plucking, things like that. Uh, when you move over to the the uh, the bluebird, uh, the bluebird is much more uh, high frequency related. So. In modern music, we have a lot more bottom end. We have a lot bigger body in the way that we record. And so the, this is much more of a modern sounding mic. It gives you a brighter tonality. Although it is full ranged, it really accentuates that that kind of high end crispiness that we like in, in much bigger mixes to get vocals, say, to stand out in front of that mix. Absolutely. And then, then the baby bottle uh, at the top of the range is really more the vintage sound, I'll say. It's more that classic kind of, um, well, the, the Eastern European sound that we would be used to yeah, when yeah. we talk about vintage mics. And it gives you that real velvety kind of round, much damp, more damp on the top, but a really beautiful kind of lower mid and much sexy kind of sound. Absolutely. Well, obviously you've got some, some versatile characters in here. Mm -hmm. One thing that's always been immediately apparent, especially with these, big boy over in the corner, they've mm -hmm. got such a distinctive kind of mm -hmm. shape. Is there, what's the kind of reason behind having the capsule kind of just in this little doodad and then all the, I imagine the rest of the circuitry well, in there? Well, uh, clearly, I mean, if you go back through history and look at microphones, our bottle up in the corner is very reminiscent of very early, uh, say, Neumann mics from mm -hmm. the 1930s. Um, if you go back and look at certain political figures from that time, <laughs> you can see them speaking and they have these bottle style mics. Mics, and that's these are kind of lollipop or bottle style microphones. Um, it pulls the reflection away from the capsule, and it keeps that that capsule kind of isolated, so you don't get uh, a lot of artifacts in what you hear. And it really is a much older style of microphone design. But uh, we we kind of took the classic Eastern European type of microphone building, uh, and we made it much more modern for the digital recording age. So um, that's where that kind of look and feel come from. Gotcha. Um, you're saying about sort of taking old, older designs. It'd be cool to look into the kind of history of the company as mm. well. I know the first time I heard of Blue was definitely through like gaming and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying earlier, that's quite a key market mm -hmm. for you. Um, we're talking USB microphone, Snowball and the Yeti, I imagine, Correct. are going to be the, the biggest names, most known to, to people online. Um, where where did where did the company begin? I imagine you didn't start. We're going to make just a, a strange spherical uh, USB microphone. That can't have been no, the beginning. No, actually, actually, the 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 first mic that we produced and shipped as a commercial product was the uh, the Blueberry, and gotcha. the Blueberry was actually designed to bring our founder's voice, who did music. His name is Skipper. Um, Skipper had been performing and and uh, was having trouble as they migrated from analog recording into the digital age in getting his voice to pop in a mix without a ton of extra compression and EQ yeah. changes and things. So they they basically, I'll say, EQ to mic to properly bring forward the characteristics of the voice and make it front and center in the mix. The, the first mic we actually built, though, was the bottle uh, over here. So our heritage in 1995, when we started as a company, was basically the bottle and the blueberry. And then we added gotcha. things like the mouse after that and then the dragonfly. Love the look of this thing. Yeah, 
<laughs> and and much like these, these are kind of the little brothers. So again, this brings the characteristic of the voice front and forward in a mix, kind of like it, which is kind of like both of these. Yeah. It, um, it, but but as this treats highs better, I would say that the Dragonfly treats highs. So okay. this is a great overhead for drums, things like awesome. that, because it gives a shimmer to the high end where this brings the mid voice forward and lets it sit in the mix. And this gives you more of that broadcast, that big, nice round yeah. bottom end. Doesn't lose the top end, but gives you an accentuation there. But that's kind of where we come from. They're hand built, very high end. In 2006, we launched the first uh, USB microphone with the snowball into the market. And uh, fortunately, we were a lot of other people announced first, but we were first to market. And then uh, in about 2009, we launched the Yeti, and they have mm. been the best sellers in the industry since. And uh, I think that's where most people now know us from, but our heritage is here. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of uh, polar patterns are we talking? I, I imagine with the with the big one, we've seen that case full of capsules. Mm -hmm. um, have you got multi pattern mics? Uh, are these kind of fixed cardioid? What's what's going on? There? Almost everything we do is in cardioid because mm -hmm. most people record in cardioid today. Um, although we do have a handful of capsules that uh, are omni capsules, we do have a figure eight capsule. But all of our mics, outside of our Kiwi, which I don't have here in front of me, which is a nine pattern multi pattern gotcha. mic, everything else is cardioid. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you ever change your mind And if you ever gonna turn around Or don't you find yourself a heavy Or if you ever gonna change it mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah Do you have any uh, kind of customers or kind of a use case where um, you've had this one one of your microphones in the range has just really worked for a particular um, kind of category of customer or something? I know you were speaking earlier about the Ember, which mm -hmm. might have been um, something that was working really well for, for gaming. We're, mm -hmm. Again, we are speaking earlier about lots more people who are doing live streaming. They're gra uh, gravitating towards uh, XLR microphones mm. rather than... Um, USB, where's um, where's the kind of core sales of the company going at the moment? Well, I mean, USB is definitely dominated because of its easy connectivity and uh, and its simple use for people. That, but now as people are progressing, they naturally want to step up in quality. And, and obviously, if you've ever gone from a, a small uh, dynamic or a small uh, electret condenser to a large diaphragm, which these are, you'll see that there's a, a, a lot more sensitivity. You get a lot more range of sound. Um, in the gaming community, however, 
that can actually be a negative because you get a lot of keyboard clicks, you yeah, get a lot of background, and, and unlike this room we're in now, most of the time people's gaming rooms aren't treated for sound <laughs> reflection. Uh, so we created the Ember, and uh, which is hot right now, and it really, it's a, it's a condenser mic, but it's a smaller condenser, and we built it very directionally so it isolates almost, or gets rid of most of your background noise. And when you take this and you go to an ember, you hear this dramatic difference in background noise. Gotcha. Um, but the core of our, our customers in this range tend to gravitate here. They're home recordists. They're people that are laying down guitar, electric vocals, drummers. Um, I mean, all, all kinds of, they're very versatile mics. Awesome. But Definitely looking forward to hearing those. Yeah. We haven't got the, um, the shock mounts in frame at the moment just because they'd be kind of in the way. Um, but we do have kind of blue um, pop filters available as well. Mm -hmm. um, and do they all come with shock mounts? What's the, They the all deal come with shock mounts, Amazing. except for the Ember, which we're not showing here. But yeah, we'll yes. have some B-roll in yep. there, I believe. Yep. So. so we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but it's now hot off the Anderton's van. We have the Ember here. Whoa, hopped out a little bit. Tell us about this guy. All right, so this is uh, this is the newest entry into our Essential series, and essentially what we've done is we've taken a, a mid-size capsule, condenser capsule, and we put it in with uh, and made it highly directional, so it rejects a lot of the outside noise. So if you're doing things like gaming, uh, or in, in as most home recordists, we're in uh, rooms that don't have a lot of isolation. Of course, yeah. And so you hear the cars outside, you hear the dog barking, so this doesn't pick up as much of that outside Side sound. It's still a condenser in there. It is still nice. a condenser. So, um, but it will allow you to basically get a condenser quality signal without a lot of the noise that would be normally associated. So, uh, the Ember is it's sexy, it's sleek, it's a absolutely it's, it's a front address, not an end address, and uh, I think would make a great companion for any studio podcaster, gamer, or musician out there. Absolutely, I think that's something we didn't really uh, mention earlier, but the podcast scene is definitely um, definitely still going strong, so that would be really suitable, as would um, the uh, the mouse. And uh, we get a lot of customers going, oh, I really want that kind of broadcast sound, so they're mm. thinking um, uh, 7Bs, which can be problematic in other ways, but um, mics like the mouse or this would be really amazing. Yes. So, built like a uh, proverbial... Uh, tank is tank. what we say over tank. here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have a different saying, but <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Anyway. And so there you have yeah. it, the ember. Lovely stuff. Take a listen to the little clips we've got here. Well, if you ever gonna change it, you gonna lose your mind. Well, if you ever gonna need help, where I'll be satisfied. So we've taken a look at kind of the more entry level offering, but you've definitely got microphones for a slightly higher end customer, project studios, massive commercial studios. Can we take a quick look at these three? Sure. That we were yeah. uh, sort of uh, holding Hinting up earlier. Really, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we'll start with the Dragonfly. Uh, so the Dragonfly is great for when you have things with excessive transients, really hard, harsh, high-end things. Think of saxophones or gotcha. cymbals crashing. Things with that that high that will kind of make you you know cringe a little bit. This has a way of just making that top in absolute silk. The beauty is, let's say you have a pair of overheads on a on a drum. This head actually pivots and rotates. So I can take it and point it almost anywhere on the drum kit to make sure that I'm going right to the sweet spot and get these. And, and I don't have to sit there and maneuver stands and do all that yeah, stuff. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, they have a little bit of a mid bump, so they're really nice on certain vocals and acoustic instruments. Gotcha. Okay. I imagine you can get some of that really nice kind of um, detail if you've got a finger style guitar, maybe oh, something like that as well. absolutely. Absolutely. So what's next? Uh, next would be the <clears throat> Blueberry. And again, as we talked about, uh, this really pulls a voice. I, I would say that you use this and most voices will feel like they're popping out in the front of a mix by about a dB and a half to two dB. And they just sit perfectly in that realm without a lot of fuss and muss. They're really great if you're doing any kind of uh, voice that you need a lot of articulation because they're gotcha. extremely clean. Um, and and 
EQ wise, they're very linear. They they don't really bump up or down. They're very flat. And uh, the beauty is like for for hip hop, rap, any of that kind of stuff, that voice will just cut right through. Again, cut through that mix okay. the right so way. So it's still quite of a natural thing. Uh, before we pop that one down, yeah. what are the little nubbins on the side? Is that part of the shock it's mount? It's part of the shock mount, mechanism? which we don't have sitting here. But yeah, it basically has two bands and it sits yeah. very nicely. And the, gotcha. the Dragonfly and this use the exact same shock mounts. Okay. okay. And then finally, we have the mouse. The only one I've encountered before. <laughs> and for me, the mouse is my favorite because of gotcha. the way my voice is. It Again, it has uh, kind of a big bottom. It's got a narrow uh, mid-range to it. And then it's got a nice crisp top end. The funny thing is, like, we'll use this, again, the same kind of articulating head yeah. that the Dragonfly has. So I can put this in front of a drum kit by about, you know, a half a meter, and I will get what we would say a sub-kick sound. But it brings the wood and the beauty of a kick drum out instead of just the beater hitting. Yeah, amazing. It's great on a stand-up drum. It's great for, like me, a baritone where I want a lot more support in the bottom of my voice because I'm kind of just under a tenor. Right, it gives me that fullness without a lot of heavy uh, lifting on my part, gotcha. but it still gives me that articulation in the top that gets that kind of grit and the air that you would get out of uh, you know where you want like a smoky, bluesy, jazzy yeah. kind of feel. So you can still get a broadcasty vocal sound if you wanted, but without sometimes yeah. you get that overwhelming yes. proximity kind of rumble. You know, this does have a beautiful, very controlled proximity. I mean, you yeah. get in and it is late night radio, <laughs> sensational in your ears. But it's a very, very versatile mic. Finally, we've got this absolute behemoth. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so big? We've got to ask. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it was born that way. <laughs> no, um, it has a very large transformer in it that is uh, nickel plate with silver windings. It makes it a very fast, responsive uh, transformer. And then it has an EF86 tube, which is a pentode tube run in triad mode, which doesn't mean a lot to us. Absolutely but, not. <laughs> but what it, what it really means to the user is that you get the beautiful silkiness of a classic tube with with a very efficient cleanliness and a, a, a straightforward. So it make, gives you a very old mo uh, sound with a very modern clarity. Gotcha. To it. I was going to say, it's so not yeah. lacking yeah. in detail. That's right. Um, so multi-capsule kind, of, kind yeah. of thing. There was a flight case yep. full of them. Mm -hmm. So you just pull the capsule off. It's a bayonet style, gotcha. which again isn't unique to us, but not many people use this style. But we have uh, 12 different capsules. Now to give you an idea of what that means to the user is, if you look back at the last 50 years of recording, certain numbers come to mind with regard to microphones, like 47, 67, gotcha. 251. M50, all these different microphones that have been used classically, well, those were all the starting points for each one of the different capsules. So when you get the entire range, which frankly is about around 10,000 pounds for the whole lot, and it's not cheap, Nothing to sniff at, but no. <laughs> you literally get a suitcase of the greatest microphones in history in one of the greatest electronic bodies that there is in the market today. And for less than any one of my competitors, like you, you can go buy certain very high end mics and they'll be ten or twelve thousand dollars. I can get all of the mics for that same price. Yeah. So for a studio guy or someone that's making a real investment, it's great because you can bring in any any singer and have the right capsule for their voice, or you can capture the piano the right way or the string section, anything you're doing. This gotcha. is very versatile. Amazing. Obviously yep. giant power supply down uh -huh. there as well. Yep. Um, and a serious presence, imagine, in, a, in any studio. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you very much for watching this video. It's been an absolute treat uh, having a look and finally being able to be able to hold blue microphones. Um, thank you so much, Haki, for, yeah. uh, for coming down. And enjoy those examples. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.